Hello and welcome. Season four, episode 11 of Duelist Community. I am dropping the weight, not not the uh, physical weight, but the uh, psychological weight that comes with the need to be seen in a certain way or the desire to be seen in a certain way, the desire to be liked by anyone or anything, which really, you know, as we've been talking about people pleasing and whatnot, just comes down to a, a nicer way of saying you're being manipulative. Um, but with the letting go of that, there's a whole shitload of freedom on the other side and I'm really enjoying sitting in that freedom recently. So if you haven't tried it out, recommend giving it a shot for sure. And I have never been so excited to be so goddamn busy. It's funny because in that freedom and admittedly it's practice, it's like anything else. It would be like if I came up to you and said, did you know that you could fly, but you haven't been using your body the right way this whole time? At first, you'd be like, no. And then you'd start to practice, right? Especially if I showed you I could. Well, after enough practice, you really start to feel very weightless. And the things that used to stress you out don't. So with dualistic unity, for example, we're doing stuff every day. Like we're working harder at dualistic unity than I think I've worked at most of the jobs I've had in my life, including labor jobs where I was working like 16 hour days. And yet it doesn't feel hard. It doesn't feel like it's an obstacle to be overcome. It feels like it's a satisfying part of the journey, almost like taking a big bite out of something delicious. And so I find myself in the thick of it hearing the thoughts of where is this going to go? What's going to happen? How many followers do you need? And going, I don't fucking care. You can be quiet now and just continuing on. And I love that process. It's so satisfying to go through that process. And more importantly, to see other people going through that process of realizing you don't have to listen to that voice. You don't have to pay attention to those thoughts because they are not reality. Reality is here now and your alignment with it dictates how that goes. It's not about your alignment with all of your thoughts and your shit. It really is just letting that go so you can stay where you are and be what you are, which is here and now. So I appreciate everybody being very patient as I went on that little rant. I'm very excited about this episode today because our guest is a former guest of Dualistic Unity in one of our roundtables, roundtable number seven. And I've been following her content ever since then and enjoying the trajectory of her insights. I'm speaking specifically of Paige Randall, uh, who many of you already know and follow because we often promote and repost her content. Uh, she talks about sound healing, self-reflection, authenticity, enthusiasm. Um, we just love everything that she embodies in the world, especially considering how young she is and how frustrating that can be for somebody as old as I am. We're very excited to have her here, Paige. Thanks so much for joining us once again, uh, everyone, Paige Randall. Hi, guys. I'm glad to be back. And I wanted to first start off by saying thank you for making that point about how the mind like is always going to be doing its thing. Like, yes, we have a brain. It's going to throw you thoughts. A lot of them clearly aren't reality, but it doesn't mean once you get to the certain point that that just stops. Like you have a brain and it's doing its job. So I think it's really cool to recognize that it's okay if you're still having those thoughts. Like I have those thoughts every day and I have to look at them and be like, nope, not today. Or some days if you catch me on a bad day, I'm like, yeah, followers, content, this, that. And it's all about just recognize that that's a part of the process. And the process and the journey literally is is the ending. So I think that's really cool um, that you recognize that. But yeah, yeah, I'm happy to be here. We're very happy to have you, Paige. I'm excited for this chat. And uh, I think it goes along with something uh, you posted about recently about the uh, the shift kind of from taking spirituality very seriously, kind of having more fun with it. And I think when you do think that there is a point to get to, you know, a state of enlightenment, uh, a pot of gold at the end of the end of the rainbow, a, a place in which you never struggle or suffer anymore. You do take all of this very seriously because you're trying to get to that place. As you recognize more clearly, more and more clearly that that place is nowhere that isn't here now. 
you start having a little bit more fun with it. You start taking things a lot more lightly because you're not trying to get anywhere. You're not trying to get to a state in which you're at peace. You're allowing that state of peace to arise within you through letting go of trying to get somewhere else. And in that, you start to have a little bit more fun with it. You realize like, oh, this, oh, this is it. This is it right here. Oh, I, I can have fun with it right now, despite all the crazy ass shit my brain is doing, because that's what the brain does. It's trying to confirm all of these fleeting thoughts that are arising through our mind at all times and, and very much working against the recognition that you're not what you think you are, because anytime a little thought comes up, it's like, let's do everything we can to confirm that and, and guarantee that this is the way things are and trying to find certainty in an uncertain reality. And so even seeing that, that our brain is a mechanism working against that recognition, it's kind of some humor in that. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is madness that we're, that we have this such a powerful machine that's always working. So a lot of times we're, we're thinking like, I have to shut it down. It's like, once you let go of that desire to shut it down, you're like, that's madness that that we're going through this, trying to confirm all of these fleeting thoughts, random thoughts that are that are arising within us. And this thing's sole job is to confirm anything we believe to be true. And we just take all of it a little bit less seriously. Like the, I don't know, the, the playfulness arises within that, the humor arises within that. But that's that's almost not that there's steps to it, but that is beyond the seriousness with which you take it because this is your experience here now are you going to take the whole thing super goddamn seriously your whole life or are you going to have a little bit of fun with it here and there and it's awesome to see you know you you expressing those types of insights because even for me this is this is like a very recent recognition or at least maybe not recognition i i maybe saw it but i'm just starting to really embody that freedom I think, and it's it's like incomparable to anything else that that you think you're gonna get out of spirituality. You know what else is like incomparable? It's like we're always looking for these grand ideas that are like that hit you, and you're like, "Damn, this is it." But really, I've been realizing what's actually it is washing your dishes, cleaning your house, going to work, doing the simple shit, and like that's it that is it yes you're gonna experience some crazy shit in your life like these past few months i don't know what's been going on like i have just been doing so many different things i hiked up a volcano i started eating meat again i shut my business down i got a regular job which i said i would never do putting myself in a box and it's just like that's what this is about you know it's it's getting rid of all the stuff you think you're supposed to be doing and just falling in love with the mundane tasks and then they become less mundane and they become more interesting and intricate and it's just never ending like how much fun you can have with such simple things in your life and that's what I think if you're gonna say the spiritual journey is about anything I think it's about that because we like to make it about these big grand ideas and it's just not you know like you could have a big grand idea, but really that comes down to all these simple little ideas that you can find in your little tasks day to day. And yeah, I don't know. Life is just has been wild for me lately, but I'm glad to say that I've just been falling in love with the simple shit. That's fantastic. And the reason I say that is because it's in such stark contrast to a comment that we had during today's live stream, which is that being present is boring. And we had to laugh to some degree because you can see it's the conceptual present. It's not actually being the present. It's being in the present. Like it's a thing that's not you. And so it's not the, the same at all. Whereas if you are the present, there's no such thing as boredom because life is so goddamn full. There's so much happening all the time. If you're bored, you're just not paying attention. Right. And that's really what it comes down to. Like my, I think my favorite moments are when I laugh at things that are inanimate, like a leaf will fall off a tree or something. And I'll see it like drifting across the ground. And I'll make a story for it. It's trying to get somewhere and then it'll stop. I'll go, <laughs> then it'll start going again. I'm like, that's it, little buddy. You know, like stuff like that. Like, why not? It's your moment, right? It's your moment. Something's happening. You can, it's like anything else. You're creating narratives for other people. Why not inanimate objects? That's how relevant they are. Right. 
So it really does come down to you just getting the most out of every experience you're having. And that was one thing I really appreciated about one of the videos that you made recently was that you were saying it's really not even about what you're doing so much as what you're getting out of it. And that's the case. That's why it doesn't matter what you're doing, but what you're doing will change according to how much you've gotten out of it. It's like, there's a saturation point where it's like, you've learned everything you can learn here and you almost feel like it's time to go. So on that note, I have a question for you. Sorry, Andrew, I'll get to you in a second. You recently went on a trip to Central America and I was wondering two things. What was the inspiration for that trip? What were you hoping to get out of it? Because I know you kind of made a video about this. And what was the insight that ultimately you took away from it? I know there's a lot, but if you had to wrap it up into one insight about yourself that you learned in being in all that uncertainty and with all that expectation going into it, what do you think it, it would have been? <laughs> this is such a stellar comment. I was hoping we would touch on this because this is, this is real shit. Like we see all these grand uh, videos of people traveling and all this glamour and glitz. And honestly, the reason that I went is because my boyfriend is in love with traveling and he loves to plan all these trips out, but deeper into why we went or, after we planned it, I, we booked this beautiful place in this little yoga hippie town. You know what I mean? There's this beautiful deck. I'm like, oh, I can make so much content here, you know, kind of getting lost in the narrative of it all. And which is OK. At the end, it, it taught me a lot. But yeah, that's originally kind of where my mind started heading with it. And when I got there, I was like, first of all, this is awesome. You know, like we did so much stuff like the hiking. I thought. You know, this is just another thing about expectations. You just can't plan on no thinking that you know how things are going to go. I went into this crazy hike being like, I am fit, you know, like I am so fit. I'm going to be, I was telling my boyfriend, I'm like, you might fall a little behind, buddy. I'm just letting you know. And we get there. We're like the worst ones. And it was such a nice, like humbling reset because there I was like struggling up the mountain, literally thought I was going to melt. I'm not kidding. And it just hits you in those moments. Like, dude, like, this is it. This is the moment. Like, it's not these expectations that you think it's going to be this little breeze and like how you want it to go. It's being in the moment and embracing the suck or embracing the fun. Like that hike I embraced a lot of suck, you know, and that became fun because I ended up embracing it. Before I did, it was a bitch, you know, I was, I was not doing okay. You would not have wanted to talk to me. I was not in a good mood. And same goes for that beautiful lake that we went to. I, I got there and I was, I was a crabby patty. Like I was, I was crabby. I'd been traveling. We went on a hike and it hit me again during it. Like, dude, this is what it's about. I appreciated that I fell into those old mindsets and traps because it made me recognize why I like to choose something different. And that goes back to just recognizing the choice aspect to things. And something I like to always say is even if you don't make the choice, you maybe want, you know what I'm trying to say? Um, okay, embrace that then. Like you didn't choose it, but embrace that you did have a choice, but you just didn't choose, you know, the one you wanted at that time. And that's okay. And through that, you can then recognize moving forward and incorporate more awareness into your choices. But when you get so hard on yourself about making the wrong choice, it becomes 10 times harder to change anything or even admit that you do have a choice in how you react and how you perceive shit. So that was that was my lesson for that trip. It was just like, let that shit go, man. Just be in the moment. If you're going to be a little bratty or a little, you know, whatever, fall into these lower states, let it be so. And then you come out the other end and you have these great recognitions and reminders. And it's like, wow, I'm, I'm happy I went through that, you know? So yeah, that, that was a little taste of, of that trip for you. <laughs> Embracing the lulls is so important. And especially as someone who makes videos and posts stuff on the internet, you then had stuff to talk about and you had things, ways to relate to people and be like, Oh, you've been through that. Yeah. I've been through that. I was actually just, just through this. And then the other side of it is that, you know, you have, you have a big following on TikTok, and a lot of people probably see you in a certain way as you go through things currently, like recently, like right now you go through something and you express it. It allows people to kind of, 
cut down that that big idea of you that they have or that they may have and allows them to kind of more see you eye to eye and and relate to you and and see that you know there isn't a place that they have to get to this person page who they see is like so amazing as everything figured out like oh she goes through th- she goes through shit too i go through shit maybe i don't have to try and get to this place that i think paige is at cuz she's right here next to me going through the shit too and that's why I love in my content too, like expressing that Uh, I go through this all the time. I feel this all the time. I made a video about nerves last week and I was like, I still get nervous all the time. I just don't resist it as much. And it's just my perspective that's shift. But it's not to say that I'm existing in a state in which I never get worried or anxious or nervous or anything like that. And so going through those things actually informs your ability to connect with people. And that's really all we ever really want to do at the end of the day is be able to connect and resonate with people. And yet we're simultaneously striving for this like ideal reality, not recognizing what all the things we'd be missing out on, including the appreciation for the you know highs that we go through. And Ray had a re- really good imagery of kind of the lulls because we were talking about that uh, last week. That was it's funny how every week with how often we talk now we have like common themes. And last week or the week before we were talking a lot about like highs and lows and and relating the highs to the lows and the necessity of the lulls or the lows. And we were talking about it, like being on a journey and just kind of like seeing it as peaks and valleys. And when you start to recognize that you're not what you think you are, it's kind of equatable to going from like drudging along the ground on the hike to realizing that you have wings and you can actually fly. It's not to say that you don't come down to the ground or get caught up in the idea of yourself thinking about yourself all the time, but you start kind of flying through the air a bit, but in order to take off, you need a little bit of momentum through the lulls. And so as your perspective shifts away from just trying to be high all the time and, and seeing the necessity in the lows, you kind of appreciate them and, and you sit in them and appreciate their I don't know, existence so that you can then appreciate the highs or so that you can kind of use that momentum to take off and start flying again, but it absolutely informs the highs. And so I just love, you know, talking about the necessity of that because another side of spirituality is like, you know, the good vibes only, like you gotta be feeling good all the time. Everything's love and light and and all that shit. And it's just like totally ignoring usually out of like a, a, traumatic response to the way that they see things or a fear and avoidance of ever touching on those lulls that they have the idea of everything is always love and light. You always have to be nice to everyone all the time. It's like, no, in freedom, you can choose any of them. It just so happens that most of the time choosing the less, I don't know, destructive option is better, better for you, but seeing that they're all options actually is existing in a state of freedom and then having the choice to, you know, choose your response more or less is a lot freer than trying to cling to just one side that just becomes another prison. And then as other emotions inevitably arise, creates resistance within you. And then you just suffer even more than you would have if you had just done that thing that you kind of naturally were, were geared towards. Yeah. I have a question for you, Paige, in, in, in regards to where you are and the trajectory of your growth since the last time we spoke. Because again, I watch your content and I get a kick out of how enthusiastic you are about the insights that you have. And in fact, the fact that they're happening so frequently for you, because that's kind of a runaway train that happens after a certain point, you start realizing, like, oh, shit, I just have to get out of the way. And they start hitting me over and over and over again. How are you finding that that is affecting how you deal with the other people in your life who aren't necessarily having the same conversation with your friends and connections and things like that in your day-to-day world other than what's on social media because often there's a period of integration where you're changing and you're getting enthusiastic about things that other people don't see as something to be enthusiastic about And, and so you have to kind of find that middle ground and one of the things that i appreciate about your content is that you always try and look at it from both sides you always try and go, yeah, you might be going through this, but don't forget other people are still looking at it this way. 
but talking about that has to come from some degree of experimentation with that actually going through that challenge because that's usually where those insights come from and so i'm just wondering how's that process going for you it's always interesting ray um it has to do with a lot of of accepting and seeing the perfection and where everyone is at like because i've gone through a lot of different stages in my life of becoming forceful or pushing myself away from people that I'm close with because they don't get it <laughs> you know like they don't get it and it's like dude everyone's just getting their own thing everyone's exactly where they're supposed to be right now and and through and obviously it's a lot easier saying that than doing it but the more you repeatedly recognize that over and over again it's like it's again back to that choice like in that moment when you're talking to someone and and you have a choice to be a little too much and push your spiritual values or concepts onto them you have a choice whether to just be present and be a part of the conversation of where they're willing to be at with you and vice versa and I think that that oftentimes leads to even greater insights when you can actually let your guard down and not have to be this crazy spiritual guru like I, f I would hope that anyone in my life um you know they kind of just think I'm a simple funny girl you know like or that sometimes gets a little angry and has some some crazy anger issues you know I get it from my dad um but it's that's me being so real because especially with my boyfriend we've been together for six years it's gonna be seven and we are like we're friends we're best friends like he's he's my closest person to me and that's I think the people that you're closest with in your life they get to see all aspects of you and when you got a good one, they really serve as a very humbling being so that they can always keep you in check. And that's what I've enjoyed about this process is sometimes he'll always catch me when I'm when I'm being someone I'm not or, or getting too invested in this narrative of myself. And he always pulls me back to my place and and brings me back to this simpler place within myself where like, yes, all of these goals and concepts and, and ideas and wisdomous thoughts, they're all great. But that's not what life's about, you know, like it's really not. And the more that you can recognize that, the more you recognize the wisdomous thoughts in your day to day life. Like earlier, I had a meeting with I'm doing this internship for this startup company um, for like uh, basically helps founders fundraise money for their companies, which is really cool to be a part of. And he has a podcast and he was asking me to start asking questions after the episode and I was like yeah yeah I can do that um do you want me to like plan out the questions and run them through you and he goes no um actually I like just finding out right in that moment because I think it makes it more authentic and it makes the conversation flow more and I was like wow that's cool and after that conversation I was like what a beautiful way to remind myself in that moment that things are just so, are so much better when you don't plan them out and you just let things be as they are and let conversations flow as they are. And that was reflected to me in a situation that I wouldn't think I'd get a spiritual lesson. And that's where that shit is. That's always where those recognitions are. So I'm glad I got out of my comfort zone and did that internship because you can get so lost in these narratives of being like, I want my own business right away. I don't want to go corporate. I don't want to do this. We get lost in that when we get in this spiritual realm. Damn. Um, but it's just not about that. And the more you can just sign yourself up for experiences and regular jobs and all this stuff, the more you learn if you're willing to. So that's, you can always find little lessons wherever you go. I'm telling you. <laughs> With a lot of this, it comes down to dropping the narrative. And so people in classic spiritual realm that you're kind of pointing to, I've come across a lot of people in that realm, you know, follow them on TikTok and stuff. And there's this whole demonization of nine to fives, like, oh, that's not, you know, high con that's low vibe stuff. It's like, what the fuck? It's just a job. It's a way to make money. And if you are bringing, embodying, you know, what you're talking about, you can bring that anywhere. You can bring it into any situation and always learn insights from it. And like in my life, I the more clearly I see things or, or at least the less 
the less narrative I have on top of the situations that I'm in, the more insights I garner from every little situation. And I know you you were talking about this in a video where you almost can't help but notice insights in like every single thing that you do now. And I think that just points to the lack of narrative that you're overlaying situations upon, like thinking that, oh, this is this way. It's like, I'm just going to do it without so much overlaid thought and narrative and see what happens. And that's where the things arise. So I know that video or the one I'm referring to was about the the split. So feel free to go into your progress on that. But I was also curious with your shift away from, you know, the previous work you were doing into the internship, what that transition was like, because a lot of people caught up in spirituality are like, oh, nine to five, can't do it. And like I was doing both for a very long time up until just about two months ago. And I never, I don't know, I, I kind of pushed against that narrative, especially when people came to me and were like, should I quit my nine to five? And it's like, there's way more to this. It's not like nine to five equals bad thing. Like lots of people can get a ton out of their nine to five. So I'm curious with your transition from more or less kind of doing your own thing and, and doing that work to the internship, not only what the actual transition was like, but your mentality, if there was, if there was like a shift within you that helped you to make that transition easier and what that was like. Yeah, you know, for these past few years of basically all that all of the years I've been in college, I have worked for myself as a house cleaner and done like power through guys stuff events always by myself, which is amazing. And I'm so glad like I get the I had the opportunity to do that. But at the same time, when you are constantly working by yourself, there's this little part where the ego can slip in and you get super lost in your life because you're not connecting to people as much or working in a group. So that's where I was kind of heading in my life when I had worked alone for so long. Like part of me was just craving being challenged by others, being in a group, working for a team. And that's why this transition has been amazing, like mentally and physically, because I feel like you have so many more opportunities for challenges and getting uncomfortable and getting yourself out there rather rather when you work for yourself not always but sometimes like I kind of fell into this I got comfortable you know I got too comfortable with that and I wasn't getting these challenges so now that I'm working for someone else I'm finding a lot of enjoyment actually in having all of these tasks that I've never done before and all of this shit that I have to learn like I I have that excitement and um, nervousness again and I love it you know and I'm not saying you gotta go out there and and get some job that you hate or whatever but don't label every regular job as as bad or you know, not ideal. You know, if you hate your nine to five, maybe get uncomfortable and, and get another nine to five that you like or or any other, jo any job, any job that maybe you'd prefer more. But I think it's good to be in a job that challenges you. I don't think you should, I don't think there's anything good about being in a very comfortable place within your job. Like there's, you got, you got to always find ways to make yourself get out there and do something different and switch it up or get like go through some hardships with it and that's what I've been recognizing and really appreciating it about this job is just literally getting challenged again I miss that so yeah it's been a blast honestly that's awesome yeah that process really does teach you a lot and it's funny to me because I'm 43. I've worked for a very long time. And there's been so many points where it's been this idea that if I could just stop working, life would be awesome. But then I've had periods of time where I didn't work and life wasn't really any more awesome. There, was, there were still things to think about. And there hasn't been a single period in human history where we haven't had to do something, <laughs> right? So doing something is actually a good thing. And we know when we don't do anything that we get rather lazy and stagnant and nothing is interesting to us and everything becomes boring and meaningless and so on and so forth. And so embracing that almost seems to be the challenge. It's almost like our job is to embrace challenge until challenge is no longer challenging. Something I always say to my daughter is when she asks me like, how do you know so much? And I always say, I just learned how to learn. It's not that I've learned a lot of things so much as I've just learned how to get out of the way. So everything that I do take in sticks 
and it's relevant to me because my opinions aren't in the way. And so that's a huge skill in itself. And if you're in a job that you don't necessarily enjoy, the challenge is getting the enjoyment part out of it. You don't necessarily have to enjoy it to learn from it. Right. And the, a big problem with that is this idea that, well, I'm here today, therefore I'll be here forever. Right. And beware, the brain does that. It really does like false certainty. It really does want to say, like, oh no, today dictates tomorrow. Well, tomorrow everything could change. You could wake up tomorrow, somebody knock on your door and say, hey, my car just broke down. Can you give me a hand? You go help that person. They offer you a job. Weird things happen all the time, but your brain doesn't know that. And it certainly doesn't appreciate it. That's crazy. Because you know what I've been thinking about lately, too, is we can fall into this trap of, oh, this is meant to be, or there's this thing that's meant to be. And I was listening to this podcast with, I think, Jay Shetty yesterday and he was talking about how he's like i hate how people always say um by this certain soulmate we're meant to be we're meant to be he goes where's the fun in that it, the, the fun in a relationship or a job at anything is you having to make the choice or if you're talking about a relationship both of you making the choice to work with each other and grow together if they're just meant to be you know it, it becomes boring you're expecting things to be like oh a perfect puzzle piece no issues we're just and and it's I'm sure Ray you know this you've been with your wife for so long and me even being in a relationship for a few years I'm like it's nothing's meant to be you make it what you will you know like you choose every moment to work on something um whether it's a relationship romantic or not or just anything in your life that you want to accomplish it's a moment to moment choice it always goes back to choice that's the thing that's been on my mind lately um in each moment and that's what makes it fun yes does that hurt at points when you have to admit to yourself maybe you made a choice that you didn't prefer sure it stings a little but after that you recognize i do have a choice though you know so even if I didn't choose exactly the thing that I wanted this time, I have a choice. I can choose again and again and again and again. And I can always shift. Um, and you go through like lows of choosing things maybe that aren't the best for you or choosing things that feel like they align with you or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's not about the choices you're making. It's the recognition that you do have a choice. And that is just something that is blowing my mind lately. And then even if you feel like you made a wrong choice. You have the choice to see it differently. You have a choice to drop the idea that it was a wrong choice and stop fucking mulling over it and continue on with your life because there were about 1,700 other choices since that wrong choice throughout your life. And so when it comes to even decision-making, people get so hung up on like, oh, pros and cons list, which I, I'm just talking from experience because I spent a lot of time and still, you know, we'll sometimes toss a pros and cons list out there for, for certain things. If I just want to get stuff out of my head, but we have this idea that like, Oh, this, this choice is going to make or break everything about my life. I need this to go this way. If, if I make the wrong choice here, everything's ruined. Like you make the choice. Sure. And that's like a split second moment. And then once it's made, once you, once you shift course or change, you know, the trajectory of your life, there's then a million other situations within the next couple of weeks in which you're making choices as well. And so with that recognition, it shows the importance of just being with where you're at, but also takes the weight off of any one decision because it's about the mentality that you embody along the way. It's not about making the right or the wrong choice or, oh, I need my life to go in this way because then you know, I'll be a success as long as I get to this point in five years and then this person likes me. And so if we get married, then we'll be together for the next you know 70 years. And th there's all this fucking finality in all of our choices. And it doesn't actually exist. Like we have this idea that, oh, this, my, I'll be set. You know, you got to have everything, make mistakes in your twenties. So then in your thirties, you can figure out your life. And then by 40, you can have it all figured out. And then you can ride off into the sunset. It's like what, and not change any of your viewpoints, not change your perspective of yourself, not change anything. Once you figure out who you are, which is another whole fucking thing that I'm tired of hearing is, you know, know yourself. You got to know yourself. You got to define yourself. You got to put yourself in this prison for the rest of your life. And we have just all of these, this finality with the choices, but understanding that each and every moment we have the choice. And if it doesn't seem like a massive choice, we have a choice in how we see ourselves or, or in 
not bringing a story into each and every moment. We have the choice to be free in each and every moment. How clearly we see that is an unraveling process, certainly, but you can be a little bit more free than you were yesterday through not thinking about yourself so much or through having less concern with what something means about you or seeing the inherent value that you have in each and every moment. But I like uh, I like the, this topic of choice because we're always making decisions. We're always walking through doors, as Jim Carrey says. And if you miss one door, you know, there's doors opening in each and every moment. So you didn't walk through one you wished you had. You got 10 more that you just missed because you were mulling over that other one. So understanding that definitely takes the weight off of, you know, when when it feels like we, we have to make a big decision or there's one decision that's going to change everything. It's like none of them do, but all of them do sort of. Yeah. Now I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here, though we're sticking with choice as I choose to do. Because this kind of flies directly in the face of a conversation we've been having recently about the non-dual philosophy and the idea that you have no choice, that everything is predetermined. And I'm bringing this up because somebody had the audacity to say to me that predeterminism is non-duality 101 and it's something I should know. And I find that to be super funny because it's so one-sided to come from somebody who is a non-duality philosophy fan that I wanted to bring this up because obviously you're experiencing choice, but on the other hand, you're aware that there is no separation. And that's something that you're beginning to explore more and more in yourself. In that exploration, the idea of you starts to dissolve, but choice remains. And that I find to be really interesting. And one has to wonder about the impact of that as you are making your choice. And one has to also wonder about the nature of choice. Is it happening every moment? Is not choosing a choice? Is it something that we're unconsciously doing all the time that nature itself, each moment is a choice in in terms of the option to pick a direction? Anyway, as we go through that, we start to recognize that, that life is choice or rather we are the extension of choice or the choice embodied, will embodied, all of that. But there's no you separate. There's no division. So it's not really choice if you're also influenced by everybody else's choices and their choices are influencing you. So that all said, do you think we have choice? Or is what you're experiencing simply one potential choice that you are predetermined to experience? Definitely not the predetermined because and I... Andrew, I hope you wrote down that quote that Ray just said, because that really tripped me out. It was like the idea of you dissolves, but choice always remains. I was like, what? Um, Okay, (laughs) I knew it. We're so connected. (laughs) But no, I... I took a philosophy 101 class last semester, actually. And a lot of the stuff I'm like, I got into it with my philosophy teacher for a little bit because I don't know, I was just talking about how like, my definition of God and stuff like that and how it's the whole. And he was like, that scares me. And I'm like, I know it's okay. We don't have to go there yet, but you know, it's just, yeah, it was a, it was an interesting conversation, but yeah, I think in Ray, I'm sure at some time in our life, we can take time to dive deeper on this. Cause I know we both are fascinated by infinite possibility and how in each and every moment there's this infinite, like multi universe thing where in each moment you are shifting to a new one like thousands of billions times per second and and that is what I think choice is um, connected to so you're making these choices every second and in each moment you have an option to shift or I think a lot of people if we um how do I word this if we remain the same right we're, we're in the same personality we are choosing over and over and over again and our brain and our bodies have gotten used to being and choosing this person over and over and over again that you don't realize that you are still shifting through infinite possibility every second because you're choosing the same one over and over again but you're still existing in that place of infiniteness you just your body and your mind it's a real thing like subconscious programming um that one 
guest that you had on your show, I forget her name, who was a hypnotherapist. I love what she was going into about that because it's a real thing. Don't get me wrong. But the more you recognize that it is a thing, the more in those moments where you're doing something repetitive, like when I get mad and I and I yell at my boyfriend, in that moment, I have a choice to become aware of the subconscious parts of myself even though it might be painful, it might be uncomfortable. And that's in that moment of awareness, you're in that infinite place of choosing a new choice. And it's just, it's totally fascinating. I don't even know how to put it into words, but I know, I know you, Ray, and I know you're fascinated by that. So hopefully I can come to Amsterdam or something and we can, we can talk about it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. No, th those, I, did you listen to the uh what was it i forget what episode but it's it's called deeper into the subconscious did you catch that one by chance because if not you're basically talking about what we talked about and i think you'll really enjoy that one because because we have we kind of go into the idea of conscious versus subconscious and how much the subconscious is just is is being created almost in each and every moment and we're just so distracted from being where we're at and like almost kind of the creation or at least just reinforcement of it is happening in each moment because we're rarely attentive to where we're at it it's allowed to be built kind of in the background to the point that all of a sudden we feel like we're being controlled by our subconscious and they say you know subconscious is like 95 percent of what you're doing is it just that we're only attentive five to ten percent of the time and so when we're not attentive that's when the subconscious is doing its work. So anyway, we we went into that. That was like, uh, I don't know, earlier in season four, maybe episode five or six. I don't know. I, I'm not even going to try and remember that. But um, I really liked what you were saying about the infinite possibilities in the, each and every moment and how much clinging to the way things have been, clinging to the idea of ourself is not just allowing things to be it's very much actively bringing it into each and every moment because it is a sort of choice to bring the narrative into each and every moment. And so if reality is flowing in a certain way, you know, say it's a river and it's this way and, and we feel like, no, nah, it doesn't quite fit the idea of me. It's like we're resistant to the flow of how things are as opposed to relaxing into the recognition that we can't define ourselves. I don't know who or what I am. I am this thing that has no past and no future there is no way to see where it is going but if you have faith in what's closer to the reality of what you are not being the idea of what you are you allow things to flow and you kind of go with it but when you're clinging to the idea out of the infinite potential number of options you're very much like choosing it bringing it into each moment and that's informing each moment and that's a big reason why we experience so much suffering because we're going against the flow of reality through clinging to a stagnant idea because I guess subconsciously we think that's what's best for us. We think it's it's the safest way to exist because it's, you know, it gives us that false sense of certainty as opposed to recognizing that we can't know what we actually are. So anytime we cling to that sense of certainty, thinking we know what we are, we're really just resisting the flow of of reality of, of the truth of what we are which can never be defined or known ever you know it's funny in such a paradox know thyself is knowing that you don't know thyself <laughs> that's so crazy i have nothing else to say i just wanted to say that it's true and it is funny and we were talking about this earlier today that know thyself suddenly becomes define thyself which is very different than knowing thyself. Knowing yourself is not conceptual, right? But we always want to settle on something, even making a choice. We always want to know if it's the right choice or the wrong choice. And this is where we get locked in indecision all the time. I know a number of people who do this, and this is the reason they come in for, for coaching, because they can't make a decision. It's like, well, how do I know which decision to make? It's like, you don't make one. If you want to get good at making decisions, make more of them. It's not about making the right decision. It's making more decisions because as you do that, you develop this sensitivity. And that kind of made me think a little bit about what we're talking about in terms of, of choice, because it's so interesting. It's not that we have will, it's that we are will. 
And it's not that we have choice, but we are choice because it's a stream of moment to moment existence. It's what we are. It's just that we think of it as we think of everything in terms of possession. I am making a choice. And I think a part of that is because we get so far out of whack, we don't recognize that we've been doing it the whole time. And so we come to this pivotal junction where everything's been fine. And all of a sudden we freak out and we're like, oh, I got to change direction. I need to make a choice. It's like, what the fuck do you think you've been doing this whole time? It's just that all of a sudden now I'm thinking about it. It's like, ah, oh, maybe that's the problem though. You know, maybe you've been making choices and you haven't been aware that you've been making choices and that's caused some distortion because you've been doing the choices for the wrong reasons or for reasons, let's say, rather than sensitivity to each and every moment. Maybe it's because of the narrative that you're looking for the right choice instead of the choice that you're making right now. So I find that really interesting that we are choice because that comes back to that whole non-dual thing of choice doesn't exist. It's like, but you just chose to say that. And it's funny because, oh, what was I just going to say? You only want to admit the choices to yourself that you like. You know, you're like, yeah, I chose that. Like this hard thing that you accomplished. You're like, yeah, I, I did that. But here, I'll call myself out. Like um, I choose every day and almost have since birth to bite my nails. I'm not joking. I'm laying it out on the table every day. I choose to do that. And does it piss me off? Yes. But does it help me knowing that I do have the choice and have I been getting better at it because of that? Yes. Did it hurt to admit that? Yeah, it did. But that's what you have to do in order to make these hard decisions. You can't just admit the choices that feel good. You know, that's not what it's about. If anything, that's setting yourself up for failure because you're not admitting um, or being able to recognize in the areas of your life where you could have chosen something different. Not saying you had to, but just recognizing it that you could have. And in each moment, you can choose something different. And a lot of us don't want to admit that because there's some things in our life that we're choosing that we don't prefer. And it's like, dude, the thing that helps you shift and change is recognizing that. So from a personal note and experience right now, that has helped me with this habit that I've had my whole life that has become subconscious and deep within me, right in my body knows. And that's the, that's the shit, like being in the shit of having to admit that and not being like, oh, it's just, I'm stressed. You know, I can't help it. I can't help it. I hate that. I hate that. I say that to myself sometimes. And I'm like, yes, I can. I can help it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a little bit of, me calling myself out about that so I hope that makes other people more comfortable with with being honest with themselves about maybe decisions or choices that they are making in each moment that maybe they don't prefer I'm not saying you gotta change I'm just saying recognize it for what it is that's all you know absolutely no that was well said and, and being willing to admit that as you said is one of the toughest parts and but once you do for some of those things starts to like unravel a little bit and you realize, oh my God, everything that I'm doing, all of the habits that I have are me choosing in each and every moment to do them. There is no, you know, obviously, you know, we can discuss subconscious programming. We did talk about it a lot in that, in that episode or the idea of what people think it is, but even believing that you have it is like an excuse and a way to avoid it because oh no, subconscious programming, that, that's a thing. It's like, okay, but you thinking it's a thing doesn't discount the fact that you can also change it. It's not like it's set in stone. Like an example of, of a habit that I got into, even just like I, identity wise was being a, saying that I'm I'm a walker. Like I, I love, I do love walking. And as I know Ray does as well, when we were together the first time we met, we walked like fucking 20 miles both of the days. Um, but that being said, it was, I did sort of build an identity around that. And there was a thing, you know, being running that I used to do when I was younger and then being through just playing sports my whole life. I have all sorts of like, in sort of like chronic injuries, not really chronic injuries, but stuff that flares up if I do too many things, uh, like running. And for a while, that was an excuse that I used to not run it was like, stuff would hurt at first. It's like, yeah, fucker, you haven't run in four years. Of course, stuff's going to hurt. But then I just avoided that by saying, 
I'm just a walker. You know, I can, I can walk a bunch of miles per day, still burn the same amount of calories, same amount of exercise, whatever. I, I get to listen to a podcast or stuff. It's more helpful to myself. And it was just like this whole fucking story, all of this narrative just to avoid running because it was less comfortable than walking. It's like, no shit. It's less comfortable. And you know, yeah, it, it is a high impact form of cardio. I will admit that, but there's, there's a difference between avoiding it because you feel like it's better for you and avoiding it because you've gotten comfortable in a certain way of living. And a lot of times in our society, we are just always avoiding discomfort and we'll come up with all sorts of crazy ass stories in order to be okay with avoiding the discomfort and the potential to grow through that discomfort. Like how often do we grow through just continuing to do the comfortable thing? Like very infrequently, I would say. And so I recently, it kind of smacked me across the face, that insight, like, holy shit, I've built a massive identity around being a walker. And I was like, fuck that shit. I'm going to start running again. And so I've been doing it again. It's like, it's allowed me to see other places in my life where I'm clinging to certain things, but that ego, that, that sense of self, that, that story that we tell ourselves that allows us to avoid the discomfort of changing, of relaxing into the reality of that we don't know who or what we are is a bitch. It comes up all the time, like in so many different ways. That's why it's so important to remain in that constant state of questioning, because otherwise we settle upon answers, not the least of which being the answer of what we are. And so it's always so important to remain in that state of questioning as much as people think like, oh, that sounds so arduous to be questioning all the time. And it's like, It's nothing compared to bringing the idea of yourself into every situation, being in that state of resistance to the way things are going, like spitting in the face of the flow of reality. That's so much more powerful than, you know, the idea of you. So you're trying to bring that in and you're just resisting. You're living in a state of resistance as opposed to a state of surrender or relaxation that only is allowed to arise when we recognize the reality of uncertainty. And all the beauty that comes with that, because, you know, a certain world kind of suck a lot. Yeah. And I want to mention very quickly that when we're talking to people who are struggling with the weight of their self-image and they're struggling with the weight of their narrative, and then we come over and go, oh, by the way, actually, just so you know, you don't necessarily have to carry all that stuff. What they hear is, by the way, here's another bag that you can add to the pile, because that's all they know is the addition of more to them. Even the idea of enlightenment becomes something that becomes a burden, becomes a weight instead of the lightning, right? Instead of taking the weight off, it becomes another thing that you must get to, to escape the pain. We had this conversation recently with the Patreon supporter who had just recently joined us about the idea of escaping the ego. And I was delighted when they asked everybody in the group, well, you're all here to escape your ego, right? And almost uniformly, everybody said at the same time, no, no not even a little bit. We're, we're just here to, to align with it, to understand it a bit more, to dance with it, to learn to use it, but it's not about escaping it. And so therefore it loses all of its power, right? That's the whole point. And, and we forget that because we're so used to thinking a certain way. We've talked about this a few times about how there's this switch where for one reason or another, usually it's just because we're tired of suffering. We actually decide, I'm going to question everything. I think about myself and everyone else. And in that switch, we take accountability because we're no longer willing to take somebody else's answer. And so there's accountability in that. And that's where that freedom begins. And that's where we really start to see things for the first time from our own point of view, rather than from somebody else's point of view that we're trying to adopt. Right. And so all that said, Paige, the reason I bring this up, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, you're very young to get all of this to the depth that you do. And I mean that as as uh, as an insult. I'm just kidding. I, and I mean that uh, as a compliment because it is difficult to get this, especially coming out of the schooling system, especially coming out of society as a whole. So I was wondering, what would you say would have been that switch for you? Because I know some of sometimes we have numerous moments where we kind of see the other side of the fence. It's like, oh, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think like these people. I can be myself. But then we get sucked back into it. But there usually is a definitive switch where we just aren't. Like we might get sucked back into it, but there is definitely gravity pulling us the other way now. It's not so much as trying to leave 
gravity to escape, but so much as we've done that, now we're just kind of oscillating back and forth. And that's that switch when we really get to do the work to go the rest of the way. And so I was just wondering, where would you consider that switch to be for you? You know, now you got me thinking, because uh, there's something about, like I have weird issues, not issues, but with memory, like I, I just I'm not good at remembering a lot of things. I sometimes I credit myself because I'm that means I'm present, but who knows? I don't know. Um, but I will say I was raised in an environment like I don't know if you guys never asked me, but I I grew up going to church. I got confirmed. I was Lutheran, but the way I was raised was very interesting because my mom, she loved taking us to church, but she didn't have any expectations for us to like follow along or like follow a narrative. She liked going because she liked the environment and she liked the uplifting things that they talked about. Like that that's why she liked it. And my dad, he never went to church, but he was always studying Buddhism, Hinduism, all these different religions just for fun and for curiosity. So I was raised in a home that was just very open to just very open, you know, and like nothing was ever, no narrative was ever forced. Like my mom would be like, be a good person, you know, that's type type of stuff, but nothing too crazy. She was just like, treat people like, like from a good place, like have good intentions, you know, like that, that's really was her lesson. And same with my dad and my dad, every week he would give us lectures about things in like open philosophy. He was a big philosophy guy. And he would just always tell us to like question things and to question people and to never assume that what someone's saying is the truth. And now that I'm thinking about it, credits to you, dad, because that seriously, like those thousands, thousands of lectures, they really did it um, because it made me question everyone. And now he probably hates it, but I question him a lot too. I'm like, are you sure about that? You know, and um, I'm very lucky that that that's how I grew up because I was never forced to believe anything. So I think that like with that being said, I definitely have gone through many periods of my life where I've gotten lost in my image. It continues to happen here and there. Like, I'm not afraid to admit it, um, but it's through that there's this same recognition and awareness that remains within even those stages where I lose myself. Like, there's always this part of me, not part of me, you know what I mean, that's there, like recognizing what is going on. And, and I think I have just been allowing things to be how they are more. Um, and that has caused me to, I don't know, just kind of start to rest in this very allowing state. Like, I'm not concerned. I used to be a very heavy future girl, um, trying to figure out who I am, who I want to be, what career. And now I'm like, I don't know. I just want to try a bunch, you know? I just want to uh, show up, do what I can. I Like, I... And there's such a freeing feeling that comes with that, like not feeling like you have to have all the answers. Like part of me, even a few months ago, was like, oh, I have to figure out how to start a business for college ends so I don't have to work a regular job. I have to do this when I get out of college. I have to do that. I have this goal. And I'm like, that's all great. That's all grand. But why are you in a rush? You know, like, why don't you just see what comes up when I allowed that to happen? Next thing I know. I get this internship with an amazing company, an amazing boss that I love, you know, and I'm just not scared of experiencing these different things anymore. I, I, I'm excited to get into these different jobs and these different places and, and discover more about myself and people like I'm not in a rush anymore. And that's a very freeing feeling. Yeah. I don't know if I answered that properly, but I tried to. <laughs> you did. And as a dad, that's super inspiring and it makes me very happy. Yeah, that was, that was amazingly put, Paige. Um, and that's awesome to hear about your your background a little bit with that and, and kind of growing up in that environment. It makes sense that you know, you've gotten to where you're at. Not to say that you haven't done a lot of work in yourself. It absolutely takes work in yourself. But it's really cool to hear that you know, as much as you went to church when you were younger, it wasn't something that was forced upon you. There weren't expectations of you. And then you, know, you were able to continue to evolve and, you know, get to where you're at now. And, and that's really the fun of it is, is relaxing into the recognition that you don't know what's happening and you are where you're at and not really sure what any of it's going to mean or where it's going to go. And that's, that's freedom. That is freedom. That's what all this 
comes down to is questioning the things that you inevitably settle upon because that's the mechanism of the brain as we've talked about and just being curious about what's to come and just being where you're at and being fully involved and attentive to the experience that you're having because then you can turn any situation even the ones that you do you know feel like you're getting caught in the shit once you recognize it there's some humor to it kind of kind of laugh at it laugh at yourself i find myself laughing at myself all the time because it's funny when you get it and when you recognize that oh no i i could take this super seriously but i don't have to i could laugh at it also and i can get worked up too and i can be a fucking asshole also and that's okay there's nothing wrong with any of it but it comes down to your experience and once you allow yourself to experience all of those things the full spectrum of all of the emotions you start to take it a little more lightly you don't take you know the lulls as seriously and you ride it you learn to ride it not about avoiding one side or the other not about clinging to one side or the other it's how lightly can you take it as you inevitably ride the entire spectrum but it's amazing to uh hear about where you're at and, and how all the things are going and i'm very excited for our next chat to hear about uh the internship and how all of that's going. And I'm just curious about it as well. Um, Cause it sounds super interesting. Likewise. And I didn't know that you grew up in a Lutheran background. I actually rather like Lutheranism. There was a lot about the Lutheran religion that I really enjoyed specifically in the community and the less of a focus on hell worthy trespasses. There wasn't a whole lot of, you know, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. It was very much like we're, we're more or less here. Cause we, we like, the foundation of it and we'd like to get along barbecue you know that kind of thing and i really enjoyed that about the lutheran religion it was very different than say roman catholicism um and oddly enough it was my gateway out of christianity lutheranism was very much my last practice in christianity before i went towards like buddhism and taoism and stuff like that and it was because of that open-mindedness because of that connection to the community itself, rather than the focus on dogma, rather than the focus on rules and worship and all that stuff. Like that was in there, but it was more or less like a cover for all, for all of us to hang out under. Yeah, you know, I really enjoyed that. So that makes a lot of sense about why you're so personable, because that's another thing that I would say about you is that you have a gift for gab. You're good at expressing yourself and you're not necessarily afraid of how you're going to come across or if you are you don't necessarily let it get involved or in front of what you're trying to say like you may have a moment like shit am i saying the right thing but you're like fuck it i'll try it. i'll do it anyway and i appreciate that which is why if anybody here is following Paige on her social media and you listen to uh, her sound bath live streams apparently and I only caught this because I went looking for it. She occasionally says, thank you for attending P and her pod, implying that Paige has a podcast. And so today in my research, and Andrew, I'm happy to say, went down this road as well, went searching for her podcast. And I was disappointed to find that it didn't exist, that in fact, Paige was just fucking with me. So if you listen to her social media, if you are following Paige, and if you're not, you definitely should be. Do you encourage her to start a podcast? Because I, for one, think it would be invaluable in terms of just her sharing her experience. She has stuff to say, right? And I think that the short form format of TikTok and Instagram can be stifling for somebody who has as much insight and as much of a gift for Gab that you do. So um, if you're not going to start a podcast, I'm going to encourage everybody to bother you until you do. And until that day, I'm going to continue to encourage you to come back here and chat with all of us as often as I can, because it really is about the enthusiasm. That's the one thing that you have in spades. You have enthusiasm for your own journey, for your own insights, for your own lessons, for your own accountability. And in that, there is freedom. And you've gotten that so early in your life that, you know, it's funny because uh, when I first got onto TikTok, I, I was resistant to it. And it was my daughter who's like, get on TikTok, get on TikTok, dad. It's so cool. Get on TikTok. I'm like, oh God, no. Oh. And she kept doing these TikTok dances. I'm like, ah, this is not encouraging me. And then finally I figured, okay, I'll, I'll put some insights up. And so I did that. I made a few and then it dawned on me like, I'm going to die one day. Sorry to bring that down a note. Um, but I should make these insights 
for my daughter in case I'm, I'm never, I'm not around. And so I started doing that. And then I started recognizing like, shit, there's a lot of insights out there, you know, and I can't really narrow them all down to three minutes or 60 seconds or anything like that. And so the podcast was the next natural step, but there's an enthusiasm that drove that. It wasn't because I wanted to get anything out of it. It's just so much that I had a shit ton to say. And I very much get that impression from you, Paige, that you have a lot to say and you have a long journey ahead of you to say it. And so I would like to encourage you to express yourself in every medium and every form that you get your hands on. doesn't matter if it's somebody in front of you or a napkin and a crayon, just, just get it all out because that's what's helped. That's what helps it process. It's that enthusiasm for the change. It's not about the high-minded conceptualism. It's like you said, it's about being in the shit. It's about the moment-to-moment -moment choices where you decide, I'm not going to make this hard on myself. And that's it. And that is an art. And it takes sensitivity. But to gain that sensitivity, you have to love it. You really do. And I very much get the impression that you do. And so I am very grateful that you are here. And... Uh, you are still doing your live stream sound baths, correct? Yeah, to be straightforward, I still do them, but now I just do them spontaneously. Like I used to go every night and it, it became a, a habit and like my ego is getting involved. Like, you're not going to do it tonight. And I'm like, I'm tired. And it's like, no, do it. Um, but now I just, I really just do it when I, when I feel like doing it and I'm in a good place to do it because what's the point of doing a sound bath if I'm not going to be present during it. So like last night, last night I did one um, and I'll probably do one in a few days. Just follow me and turn on the notifications. And when you see it, get your ass in there. All right. Because I love the sound baths because obviously everyone has a different way of perceiving things and to each their own, you know, but for me, the sound baths have been extremely helpful in cultivating a neutral space. Like, I think it's just with sound in general, even voice singing, it creates this space, you know, and maybe it's not like this for everyone, but for people who are especially sensitive to sound, it really gives you the opportunity to rest within the moment without the buzzing of the mind. You're feeling the buzzing of the bowls, you know, and, and you can just rest in that place of not jumping on the next thought or doing all of these different things. You're just observing and you're just being present. And that's actually a lot of the feedback that I get from it as well, which is amazing to hear because that's what it's about. It doesn't matter what uh, spiritual practice you're doing. It's literally just about being there fully and doing it. So I did stop doing them as much as I was because I wasn't there fully. And I was sitting there sometimes and I'd be like, oh, 20 more minutes, you know, like, what the hell? How could I be playing these amazing bowls and, you know, getting lost in the narrative, getting lost in the thought. So I will say sometimes schedules can be detrimental in that aspect. In other aspects, they're very nice. But if you can recognize when you're doing something and it feels forced, chill out dude because it's not going to help um and if there's one thing i would also say to people whether it's younger or older everything you do you're still going to be nervous to do it like it does not matter what it is there's always going to be uncomfortability found within something and if it is comfortable then you probably shouldn't do it because it's not going to be that fun you know so I know there's just so many people in my life and other people that I know that want to do these crazy things and, and same with myself and it's like you just gotta be okay with not knowing and taking accountability for your actions like if you mess up say you messed up you know, like it's not a big deal. And that's one of the number one things I talk about on my TikTok too, is not being scared to say, I was an asshole. I'm sorry. Like, like I said, I can be a hothead and something that I've gotten great practice with when I yell at my boyfriend and my sister is I'll yell at them. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And then after I'll be like, I'm sorry. I was just projecting my own anger at myself onto you. And that's not cool. You know? And there is some times where I don't do that because I'm very stuck up. But for the most part, um, incorporating in that recognition of being able to admit to yourself when you know you did something that was just not cool in that moment. Um, it is huge for relationships with yourself and other people. And that um, will allow you to grow and experience so many different opportunities if you're willing to recognize your dips and your ups. So if that was one thing I could tell people, that's that's what it, I would say. <laughs> I really like how you put that. It's interesting because I was pretty fiery like that myself. I still have it in there, but I've learned 
over time to temper it. Um, but it really is accountability kind of adds another like two inches to the fuse. All of a sudden you're just willing to take accountability for the fact, all right, I'm pissed and that's kind of on me. It's not really about you, but I really want it to be about you. And, but at least you're accountable for it. And so you have that extra space to give it a few more seconds. And then later on, you start to feel that coming a little faster, right? I was talking to somebody recently and uh, going through kind of the same thing. They get fired up and because it, the double-edged sword to enthusiasm is passion. You can be really passionate about things. And when you feel all riled up, you really feel riled up. And it's not that that's a bad thing, but it's like any fire that gets out of control, right? Like it, it'll burn you. And so it's learning how to use the heat but temper the flame. It's learning how to direct it. Right. And so I was saying to this person that, you know, when you feel it building, just one long exhale, just, just make it as long as you can, but visualize all that shit, just leaving like yourself deflating. Cause you can feel when you're getting worked up, it's almost like your whole body is just raising up. You're like, you're growing in real time, right? It's like the monster is here. Right. And, and so deflate that as it's coming out, as it's, as it's rising, you know, and it's funny because in Qigong, that's actually a pushing out of your energy is, is to release your excess chi, right? So that long exhale gives you that extra second to kind of let your brain engage and go, hold up. You want to do this? Because it's about accountability, as you said. Yeah, you can be accountable after the fact, but that gets tiresome, right? Where you're like, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, shit, I did it again. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, shit, I did it again. And you can get into that habit. But if it means something to you, that means you have to start feeling it before it comes, right? Which is just paying attention. But you've got the right first step, which is accountability. Like, I was making that about you. And in fact, it wasn't about you. So my bad. I'm going to go for a walk. Super helpful. I was going to ask you, is, do you do Tai Chi? Is that, what, what is, is it? I do Wing Chun, but I also Wing, learned some Qigong. Wing Chun and Qigong. I was curious because you said Wing Chun was more um, like combat oriented. I was wondering if that helped you kind of with that fieriness within you. Cause sometimes if you don't find a way to release it always, it can come out to other people. And I'm just curious and entering that stage within myself of where I can utilize, like when I, when I weight lift, for example, like, and I'm like, <laughs> it really helps get that, that fire out. But I've been trying to explore new avenues and um, try some of that other stuff. So I was just curious. Um, Wing Chun really that helps worked you. for me. And it was just because, while you are intensely focused, you have to maintain a relaxed body, which is tricky. It's very contradictory. And because both of your hands are moving independent of each other, it's very much like trying to rub your head or tap your head and rub your belly at the same time. So there's a lot in terms of, of training yourself and muscle memory and presence and all of that. So yeah, it really helped because I, it, I couldn't afford to get so carried away. I had to focus in. And so, yeah, it very much helped. And then the Qigong was more or less just learning how much of my energy I was giving away through not focusing on my breath, through not recognizing how stressed I was, through not recognizing that, like, just out of fear. It's like, oh, that's happening. And I didn't, I didn't even know. And it's just because we never spend the time to actually focus in and pay attention. Right. But um, yeah, most exercises that bring you to the present, admittedly, the one I want to learn and I want to put more time into, but I'm going to wait until I'm a little bit older uh, is Tai Chi. I would very much like to learn more about Tai Chi because what I've what I've practiced and experienced from Tai Chi is mind blowing because it looks so slow and so calm and so easy, but it is rock solid. Like there is so much strength in Tai Chi, but it's it's misleading because it seems so soft, but the martial arts end of Tai Chi where the actual fighting style is brutal. That's just crazy. And it reminds you of how all of these different things always reflect different archetypes. Like, I think this is where people get all of these different archetypal things from is, but what we get lost in, in assigning them to, to specific acts when archetypes can be found within 
every single thing. Like you were just describing Tai Chi as like slow and calm, but firm. And you can relate that back to life and having that extra moment within yourself to take the time within each moment to fully be there. And that actually being such a strong anchor for you. And a lot of people, like we convince ourselves, we have to be fast. We have to do grind culture, go, go, go. But that's not as firm. You're, you're, you wouldn't be ready if something popped out. If you're going slow and steady, you're like, no, someone tries to, you know, hit you. But if you're going fast, you know, like you just might miss it. You just might miss something. So it's, I, that's also something that, even the other day with my roommate, um, we were watching Love Island. Crazy show, crazy show. Um, and I, we were watching these people get into these fights or these conversations. And I'm like, wow, that's another way to see like different archetypes of how you put a big group of people in a room. These little archetypal relationships start to form of like people who are the fiery ones, ones who don't share their emotions. And it shows you how similar and connected we all are, but we all have this very individual, unique expression to ourselves. But there's just this similarity that runs through all things and reflects all these different archetypes. And it, it's just mind blowing to me. And you can find that within anything. And I mean, anything. It's really trippy. <laughs> A perfect example. I'll throw this out there and pass it back to Andrew. Uh, if you can, if you ever get the opportunity, there's a book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Perfect example of what you're saying. That lessons are in everything. I have that written down as well. I'll definitely be checking that out. But yeah, I think Paige, I definitely just resonate with you with you know seeing the insights and everything and and understanding that you know the base is important. We get so lost in the extremities, you know, of the of the tree, if we want to put it like that. And the trunk is is where our base is formed. And if we can exist in the trunk, there's a shitload of symbolism there, you know, seeing that all the leaves are you, you know, not being shaken as much, all of those things. But that's that's where we can sit, and that is a possibility to be in that place. But and then you can kind of see everything happening in a certain way and even your responses you see it as symbolic in in a way of you know the flow of the way that things are going and you see you know, even more deeply that everything's always happening perfectly like we're always in that flow even when we think we're not we're still in it and uh just just to go back to your love island comment it's funny because i was just with some friends this weekend and two of them are super into love island so they got us into watching it it's just like such a classic cliffhanger like just very egotistical show but you kind of just want to keep seeing what what happens and it's funny and it's funny too because i actually i had forgotten about this not for the uk version but the u.s version got an email asking um from one of the producers of it like back early 2021 asking if i wanted to be on it or like you know, apply for the show glad i glad i didn't and my friends were asking like oh what if you get invited now like would you ever do it I was like i got other shit to do i got uh other messages to get across than something like that but uh yeah building building that base and i think that really comes back to understanding where the base is built is here now and so being attentive to where you're at not getting so caught up in you know, trying to build the idea, trying to build the extremities, see how high you can build the tower. It's just like a fucking twig that goes a thousand feet in the air. It's going to happen a little bit of wind that comes tumbling down. But if you have a that solid base, it's very unshakable. And you, you start to see that that, you know, infiltrates other iterations of you more and more. And you see that, oh, you know, the base, the reality of you isn't limited to the idea to this limited iteration and that you actually are having influence on everything and everything's having influence on you, but how clearly you recognize that impacts how much influence you start to have as you let go of that idea and the need to get somewhere as quickly as you possibly can. Cause as we know, there's nowhere to get, it's all here. And it's crazy because if there was one thing I could say that, and I don't know, I'm just guessing. If there's one thing I could say that would be the base of being, would be the base of being anchored into the unknown. And it's crazy because you would associate unknown with just like 
chaos and and all of these negative things but if you are okay with not knowing how things are going to play out and just being okay with being in the moment and having no idea about the past or future your base is strong regardless because nothing can impact you out what what could impact you if you're okay with not having an idea of how things are going to play out I, like seriously like i ask myself that all the time because it's like what what would affect you if you were totally okay with how things were in each moment? And some people will say to me, because I make a lot of videos on acceptance, and they'll be like, yeah, well, that's just you accepting the situation you're in. I go, no, from accepting where you're at, it opens up new opportunities that you never would have seen before. I'm not saying you have to go down it, but it's definitely not a stagnation. Like acceptance is not a stagnation. Acceptance is a flow because by accepting, you are noticing all of the different opportunities and windows that are there. And then you can make a choice to to choose one or it, regardless, you're making a choice. So I guess that doesn't even make sense. But yeah, like the base is being okay with not knowing. I, I think that's what it would have to be. And there's something very peaceful about that. I agree. I love the visual there that the foundation of all of this is uncertainty because we are limitless. So any false certainty is a limitation. And the more we settle on that, the more shallow our roots are because we're not allowing ourselves to get deeper into what we are, which is everything, which is complete uncertainty because uncertainty is potential. And that's all we are is pure potential. And so in embracing that, we get very deep roots. And that's why it's so much harder to shake us. Because we're anchored in that strong foundation, which is not needing a goddamn foundation. So I think that is a fantastic way to end this episode. I have so enjoyed this conversation as I knew I would. I want to say thank you very much to Paige. I want to give a quick shout out to her awesome parents. Um, I want to say thank you to our listener for joining us for this episode. I do want to say that we do have two tickets left for the April retreat. If you would like to join us, we would love to see you. Uh, there might be an event coming up in Colorado in June. Do join us on Patreon. And of course, you can keep up to date with all of those events as they come out. I'm going to pass this over to Andrew very quickly, but I want to say Paige again. So grateful for you being here. So grateful that you are a part of our community. And as always, I'm inspired by your progress. Yeah, likewise. Thank you so much for joining us, Paige. It's always a pleasure chatting. And I love everything that you're doing, everything that you're embodying, the authenticity that you express. I love your form of videos and and how you know casual and, and laid back you are and yet mixed with the powerful insights. Like I definitely admire that. And do my best to incorporate that type of you know, lack of desire for it to be something. And therefore it is the fullness of what it could possibly be. And any desire that I have for it is just doing that, just relaxing into it. Uh, just pulling my phone out and saying shit. Like I, I love that style of video. And so I appreciate you just being comfortable enough to, to share in that way. And, you know, your, your clarity that you're seeing things with, is admirable and i'm excited to see your progress and keeping in touch along the way but thanks again for joining us and i'm excited for our next chat thank you guys it's always fun i knew i was gonna have a fun conversation with you guys and i just want to say thank you both for creating this space you know because as you guys always say how we change the world is is each shift that goes on within us or just recognizing the world and reality for what it is and that's exactly the space that you guys create and it's really cool to watch you guys grow and expand because it's always been that growth and expansion and you're just watching it play out so it's really cool and I'm and I'm happy to watch it play out with you guys and uh hopefully we'll have uh, more chats in the future maybe on in my podcast page in her pod so stay tuned <laughs> Hell yeah. That sounds awesome. I look forward to it. Thanks so much, everyone. We will see you next week. Bye, everyone.